And with that, from one theater of conflict, we turn to another, that's West Asia. It's a region with numerous rivalries and divisions. What if I tell you that things there are changing, that West Asia is witnessing a transition? Old rivalries are fading in the face of new temptations. Old enemies are becoming friends again. Just to put it simply, the Arab world seems to be uniting for a common cause. And what is their cause, you ask? Countering Western hegemony, standing up to American domination. And to achieve this, they are bolstering their ties and putting decades of differences aside. Just have a look at some recent developments. On Thursday afternoon, something rather unusual happened. The president of Syria, Bashar al-Assad, landed in Jeddah. What for? To attend the Arab League summit. And this development is significant, to say the least. Assad is attending this summit for the first time since Syria was suspended from the regional body in 2011. That's right. Since then, Assad was shunned by many fellow leaders after his government's violent crackdown on pro-democracy protests triggered a civil war, a war in which half a million people were apparently killed. Listen to this. In view of the Syrian government's failure to carry out in its entirety and immediately the Arab League's initiative that was signed at the foreign ministerial level meeting on the 2nd of November 2011, we announce the suspension of the participation of the Syrian delegation in meetings of the Arab League Council and all of the agencies associated as of November 16th. But this month, Syria was readmitted after states which had backed the opposition accepted that Assad's grip on power was secure. And this includes the summit's host, Saudi Arabia. Have a look at these images. They show Assad arriving at that summit and being greeted by the Saudi Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. The two were seen hugging with huge smiles on their faces. After which, they proceeded for a photo op. Assad was also seen standing shoulder to shoulder with Arab presidents and kings who for years sought to weaken him. This included the King of Jordan and President of Egypt. Now remember, this visit comes shortly after Assad visited the UAE. In March this year, he went to Abu Dhabi on Sunday and met his counterpart, Sheikh Mohammed bin Saeed Al Nahyan. And this was Assad's second trip to the UAE in as many years. Interestingly, this one came right after a visit to Oman last month. So that's three countries in three months, and all three were once Syria's enemies. They now consider it as a friend. So what explains this at all? Well, there are two reasons. The first one is the 6th February earthquake. It devastated large parts of Syria, also caused a huge number of casualties. The diplomatic momentum that was generated in the earthquake's aftermath has bolstered Damascus's relations with Arab countries like the UAE and Saudi Arabia. They both sent millions in aid to help Syria rebuild. So that's one reason. And the other one is the growing closeness between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Remember a few months back, the two arch rivals who were fighting a proxy war in Syria decided to normalize their ties after years of animosity. This development was striking. It stunned most of the world, not because the two were sworn enemies, but because of who brokered that truce. China did. We've been telling you about this. This truce was the result of negotiations orchestrated by Beijing. It arranged talks in the mainland for several days for representatives from both sides. And guess what Iran is doing now? 
It's hailing the reinstatement of Syria into the Arab League. Have a look at the report on your screen. Praising the decision, Iran's foreign ministry spokesperson has said, and I'm quoting, addressing differences among Muslim countries contributes to regional peace and reduces foreign interference in the region. And how should we view this? We know the Arab world is uniting. We know China is playing a big role in this. Could a strategic alliance follow soon? An alliance between governments on the lines of the NATO or the Quad? An alliance that could also include China and its partner Russia? I know it may sound far-fetched, but if we go by the pace at which things are evolving, it only seems to be a matter of time. Because why else would China involve itself in the affairs of the Arab world? Why else would it try to broker truce between long-time rivals? Does it want to bring them together to put up a united front against America? We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.